You might think that you know everything you need to know about the messiest girl group of all time, Fifth Harmony, who are currently enjoying a beautiful and well-deserved renaissance on TikTok with All In My Head Flex suddenly becoming the song of the century. Well, maybe just the song of the week, but it's my song of the century. But I assure you, however messy you think it was, it was even more than that. And as a chronically online gay who loves pop music and dutifully performs messy boots on the ground journalism for you each and every week here on my YouTube channel, Swiftologist, I am here to break down the dissolution of Fifth Harmony. And I wanna take it all the way back to their inception and go all the way to the present day. So that's like 10 years of mess. And if you can believe it, it's still going on. So I'm gonna give you all the tea, all the information you need to know, and also give you my analysis on why they were kind of doomed to fail from the start, and also take a look at each and every one of their solo endeavors because I think it's very curious that we're like what six seven years out from the band now and none of them have really made a huge mark I mean Camila Cabello arguably you know because she had the credibility of leaving first kind of had a head start on the rest of the girls but you know None of them are doing particularly great, I would say, career-wise as pop girlies on their own. You know what else is so interesting about this tale? There are so many more ancillary characters than you realize. The artist formerly known as Poot Lovato, Demi. Taylor Swift, heard of her? Shawn Mendes, Simon Cowell, Harry Styles, Jojo, noted singer of Too Little Too Late, another song of the century. <laughs> I think their breakup was like so cataclysmic and messy that it kind of unfortunately created an iconic pop culture moment that none of them have truly been able to surpass in their solo careers. Camila is functionally retired, but apparently about to do terrorism with some new hyper pop music, which I'm not excited to hear. Normani was in the witness protection program until she announced her debut album dopamine which is coming out soon so we're happy to hear about that lauren is i don't know smoking weed and spreading love around the world ali brooke is a virgin dina jane is kicking over chairs while screaming and making tiktoks oh, yeah. This video was inspired by the Chronically Online Girl series by Nicole Rafi, who makes these incredible and hilarious videos. I just watched the one that she did about Meg The Stallion and Nicki Minaj's beef. Today I'm going to borrow her idea and her title and do my own spin on it. We definitely need to go back to the beginning to where it all started to get a sense of the tension between these five girls that were randomly plucked out of obscurity by this man this evil demon, Simon Cowell, and deemed not good enough to make it on their own as a solo artist. Simon Cowell said that his intention going into the season of The X Factor was to do another little mix One Direction combo, and that is exactly what happened with Fifth Harmony. So they were originally called Lilas, meaning love you like a sister. Is that not the most like 2010 thing you've ever heard in your entire life? <laughs> and they would go on to be the only successful act, in my opinion, that came out of the X Factor US. So we clapped and we cheered. So Simon was really taking the formula of creating a band together out of people that weren't good enough to be on their own and forming like a super group of sorts that propels them to instant stardom. He was really looking to replicate this with the US version of the X Factor, which was pretty short-lived compared to its UK counterpart. Now there is a problem with Simon's theory of getting random people and putting them together and forcing them to be in a group. And do you know what that problem is? Is that it doesn't really account for the individual. Usually when a group forms at their own volition, they have a shared idea of what the group is going to be or a goal that they're going to be working towards. When I think about a group that had like a mission and an orientation and like a purpose, I really think of the Spice Girls who were in kind of like training camps long before they actually debuted. The kind of unique thing about the X Factor is it is like lightning in a bottle. You kind of just become famous overnight you don't really get to have that like learning and making mistakes period in private you have to do it in public while also trying to make record labels money and sell your records and promote yourself and do all these things and grow up because these girls were young too it's not an easy task the process of how they did this is actually very cruel we're definitely overdue an x-factor american idol schadenfreude uh reckoning we need to think about why we as a society enjoyed watching people debase and humiliate themselves on national television every week but the process of creating a group like this is pretty cruel all of these young girls are like lured in by the idea of this instant stardom and success and then told that they are not good enough to accomplish their dreams on their own and they were de facto competitors even before you put them all together right because you're only auditioning for a certain number of spots on the show the judges asked me to call the following people back Camilla Cabello Ali Brooks Dinah Jane Hansen Vermont so when they come together as a whole, crying on stage after being rejected and then thrust back on, they realize two things. Number one, their actual dream of being a solo artist is currently not possible in this scenario. And number two, this is likely their only chance of actually making it, whether they like being in a group 
or whether they even like each other at all. And it's not like they have, you know, a couple of days to go and like think about, hmm, do I really want to be in this group? Does it align with my creative interests? They are put on the spot and told that they're being formed into a group. I don't think they're even asked if they want to be. They're just kind of told that together they can be stronger. You are all, look at that, as you are, invited to the judges day. And go on to the next round. And so they did. It's kind of contradictory, especially for a girl group, because the whole premise of a girl group is that they're kind of marketed towards a younger audience and we believe in their friendship. We believe in the girl power. We buy the story that they're selling us as your quirky besties, your older sisters, or your role models. But how can you sell closeness between total strangers? None of these girls knew each other before they were thrust into this group together and had to create their social bonds in this incredibly strange and surreal dynamic. So again, as I mentioned, the other problem with the X Factor is that you are kind of expected to be superstar on the spot. And this idea that you can like have a wand waved over you and then turn from a pumpkin to this gorgeous ball gowned princess in front of the whole world is kind of unfair. Other artists get to cut their teeth more slowly and maybe they get development deals like what I said about the Spice Girls, but X Factor victims, and yes, I'm calling them victims, are expected to be ready to be professional pop stars on the spot. They are judged as though they know what they're doing. And some of these girls were really young and X Factor victims are not prepared for superstardom. Many of them have like very limited performing experience, certainly not on the scale of being on national television every night and zero media training, or they have no experience with living with the brutality of living your life in public on social media, which was only kind of really starting to pop off at this time period. Do you think anyone prepared Normani for the inevitable racist backlash of being the only black girl in the group? This is so crazy and it's borderline abusive to the younger members of this group. Camila was literally 15 years old when she auditioned for the X Factor. That is too young. I don't think that you can have a child doing that, even if their parents give permission. We as a society have got to say no. So the year is 2012. Let me take you back to the moment that they were created. They are brought onto the stage and compiled into this group called Lilas in Miami, Florida. They competed in the groups category on the show and respectably placed in third. I thought that was a pretty good achievement for them. So what was good about them at the time? I think Fifth Harmony was a very modern girl group. There was a lot of diversity in their backgrounds and their lived experiences. And I have to say, one thing about Fifth Harmony is that they gave it their all. Most of the time, they really, you know, to their own detriment from time to time, to their own embarrassment, and humiliation, they gave it 185% all year round. <laughs> And I guess this is what happens when you rip people's dreams away and then dangle that dream in a different form, kind of like a carrot in front of them afterwards. An air of desperation <laughs> starts to sink in. And, you know, Fifth Harmony were just performing in prom dresses and screaming Ellie Golding songs. And, you know, they were absolutely belting. And that was the best they could do. What we can see from the very start is this era of competition. Each and every one of them is fighting for their goddamn lives to get some attention on stage. This happens all the way through their tenure as well. It was not a dynamic that stopped after the X Factor was finished. Camila is screaming. Ali is screaming back at her. <laughs> Normani is dancing like it is her last day on earth and she has to dance to save her life. <laughs> Lauren is doing her very best to remember the choreography. And Dinah is just trying to make sounds come out of her mouth. There is no cohesion. <laughs> there is no group. It's like the girls are performing against each other, not with each other. And this is only exasperated by the first brick at Stonewall, thrown by none other than guess who? Who on this wall is constantly seen at the scene of the crime when it really has nothing to do with them at all. Demetria, Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato was a judge on The X Factor this season and she, after one of their performances, said to them, But I feel like tonight there was only one person that shined. You. Camilla, I think you guys should all learn something from her. And you know what? This is the charge that ultimately broke the band up. This was a dynamic they were never quite able to shake. Camila was anointed very early on as the soloist and the star, and I think that caused irreparable tension and damage within the group. I would say that out of all the Fifth Harmony members, Camila has definitely taken the most beatings, some deserved, 
some not. But this wasn't really her fault that she was singled out as the star. Again, can I stress that she was 15 years old at this time? A literal child. She was like a dorky theater kid who had a camera suddenly trained on her. Of course she was going to go ham. And like it or not, Camila is a very charismatic and compelling performer. She's not the best singer in the group. That's probably Ali. She's not the best dancer in the group. That's probably Normani. Well, no, it definitely is Normani. But there is just something about her that draws your eye to her when she's on stage. Normani, to me, just doesn't have the voice to be the standout star when she's in a group context like that anyway. If Normani could really sing, it would have been over for Camila. Game over for Camila. After the show, the girls were signed by Epic Records, helmed by former X Factor judge L.A. Reid, and to Simon Cowell's Psycho Records. This is a notorious clown car operation, okay? It is known for making terrible creative decisions, for profit maximizing, much to their artists' detriment, doing terrible contracts, and working their stars to the absolute bone. And let me tell you, they did that to these girls. There was actually a leaked video of Lauren literally having a breakdown about how hard she was being worked and how little they were seeing in return. Make decisions on a regular basis to fuck us over, to make us literal slaves, like literally slaves. Ali, we're doing no, fucking I mean, labor every I day, and we see nothing. A couple of years later, an attorney who tried to help them get out of this mess of contracts that they were in would say that the Fifth Harmony contracts were some of the worst she had ever seen in the entertainment industry. So the girls are like immediately put in a position where they can be taken advantage of. Most of them come from middle or lower middle class families and they have zero entertainment industry experience i would imagine that the dynamic is kind of a scarcity one you're thinking like oh okay well this is the record deal we have to take this one so out of a place of gratitude for the opportunity they sign the first contract that comes their way but i'm getting ahead of myself with all that contract talk because now we're in 2013 at the top of the year the deal is officially announced and fifth harmony keep up the momentum of their x factor win by posting covers on youtube a super smart way to stay engaged and relevant with their audience while they worked on their debut ep said ep is called better together and it was definitely a commercial success if there was a litmus test for their label to see hmm are there legs in this group do, do we want to invest in them to see if they can go further well then this was their answer yes other notable songs from this era better together heard of it me and my girls heard of it and many of these songs yielded some very 2013 visuals this this EP was definitely marketed to tweens and teens. Remember when we used to make music for young people? Huh? Remember that? These days, the 10-year-olds are listening to WAP and buying Drunk Elephant. But, you know, back in the day, it was turn up, miss moving on, and let's go to Target and get an EOS lip balm. They performed in high school gymnasiums and at county fairs, but there wasn't a lot of discord between the girls at this time, other than, like, some normal onstage squabbling. But they worked really, really hard. They had crazy schedules and got almost no time off to be with their loved ones, and they also got to open up for their noted non-believer and Camila Cabello stan Demi Lovato on her Neon Lights tour. They definitely had a big push from their label around this time as well, and I think the budget got slightly bigger, and they went on the iHeartRadio jingle ball circuit and got to perform, and then it was time for their first full-length project, Reflection. We are now in 2014, and something that became immediately clear upon hearing their first full-length project was that Camila is the voice of Fifth Harmony. There are many reasons why that could be. They simply favored her behind the scenes or decided that she was the star for no reason right off the top of the bat. But one has to say that Camila does have a very unique tone. Call it nasal if you want, but when you hear her voice on the radio, you know that it's her. Nevertheless, the line distribution between the girls on this record became a huge source of tension between the girls. Camila was getting way, way more parts in all of their songs than any of the other girls. Dinah Jane and Lauren Haregi were both completely left off of two of their biggest singles, Worth It and Sledgehammer, and those are both songs that feature lengthy contributions from Camila that definitely could have been like cut up and spread around to make it more egalitarian, but they weren't because the producers didn't care. It seems like they actually even fostered and encouraged this atmosphere of contention. This becomes very stark and clear when you break it down by percentage on reflection. Camila sings 51% of the record, Normani sings 43%, Ali sings 39%, Dinah sings 37%, and Lauren sings 34 which is crazy because Lauren has like one of the best voices in Fifth Harmony, but I digress. So at this point, they're like a real group, you know? They're starting to get kind of famous. Their lead single boss, Michelle Obama. Purse so heavy getting no dollars. Heard of it? Oh. 
Heavily features Normani and it's served. Why lie? The music was good. Plain old simple pop music and Reflection is actually a really solid pop record. X Factor group music because they have that kind of instant momentum and windfall of like fan base behind them as soon as they enter the market means that the music doesn't really have to be good to sell. Like they really could have just sold this product without putting effort into it. But the music is surprisingly good for what it is. Now keep in mind Fifth Harmony did not have a lot of creative control over their album so I wouldn't say it had very much to do with their own decisions. But it is surprising good for what it is. The girls perform on the VMA red carpet. They're not invited to perform at the awards show, but they perform on the carpet. And it slays, I guess. At this point, they're kind of becoming memes too. Camila falls over on stage a lot. We get them performing at an old folks home and Camila going clap, everybody clap, to an empty room. We get I didn't get no sleep cause of y'all, the worth it meme. I didn't get no sleep cause of y'all, y'all not gonna get no sleep and various performances where some of their mics were just completely turned off. So during the promo cycle of Reflection, Worth It becomes a bona fide hit, like a real hit, not like a relative good for a girl group from the X Factor kind of hit. They're brought over to the UK and Australia to do some promo and the schedule is still relentless, but they are finally starting to see the fruits of their labor. The hard work is somewhat paying off. They've gotten better as a group, but you get the impression still whenever they perform that Camila is actively trying to steal the show. Whenever the other girls try and act like a group together, she ruins the moment by bleeding like a goat. I love Camila sometimes, but I have to say that this is this is just the truth. She could be really, really irritating in the live performances, and it's a very funny dynamic to watch, but it must have been really annoying to live through. But again, you suck it up in service of the goal, right? Another thing that I love about the Fifth Harmony live performances is that to outdo each other, they would all change their verses so much, like two little lines. They would change them so dramatically to stand out from each other that the whole song would end up sounding like a different song because no one was singing it the way it was supposed to be sung. It was a very confusing dynamic. Now we're in 2015 and we need to enter one Miss Taylor Swift onto the record. Taylor randomly throws a surprise party for Camila Cabello and this was a really weird thing for her to do at the time. Though they were on the come up, Fifth Harmony were very much still like kind of a kid's artist first and foremost, like a lot of radio play on Radio Disney. And Taylor was, of course, cruising through her iconic 1989 era. I think Taylor was very much, you know, friend collecting for the girl squad at this moment. And she just saw something that she liked in Camila. And who can blame her? Camila was, you know, kind of the standout star at the moment. Taylor is a businesswoman. That's what we need to remember here. What she saw in Camila was what everyone else saw. Camila stands out. And I'm sure that Taylor realized in that moment that Camila would be better solo. I have no doubt that Taylor Swift played an instrumental role in Camila leaving Fifth Harmony and going at it alone. I'm sure Camila also told her about the insane contracts that she was locked into and Taylor said, oh no doll, not my friend. We need to get you out of here. We need to hook you up with a 13 management attorney and get you on the private plane. I can imagine that this probably didn't feel very good good for the other girls and members of Fifth Harmony. Her, Camila getting all this extra special attention from one of the biggest pop stars in the world after kind of already getting most of the attention all the time anyways. It is kind of interesting how the rest of the Fifth Harmony members were never invited to any of the Taylor soirees. And I think this is likely because Camila and the girls were never really friends to begin with. They were colleagues whose job was to act like they were friends in front of the whole world. Does that sound fun to you? Does that sound like something that you would want to engage in? So obviously Fifth Harmony aren't the biggest stars in the world, right? They're still doing interviews all the time. Taylor Swift is a hot topic. So naturally, interviewers, when they're talking to Fifth Harmony, are going to ask Camila about Taylor Swift. And understandably, when they do this, the other girls are starting to look annoyed when it gets brought up. It's a question for just Camila, not the whole group. Taylor, my friend Taylor Swift, <laughs> we were texting and she asked me what I was going to do for my birthday. And at the time, I wasn't doing anything. I was just like eating with my family. And she's like, Oh, well, you can't do nothing for your birthday. Come over. And around this time, she starts citing Taylor as an inspiration to write your own songs, which is something that Fifth Harmony were kind of actively discouraged from doing. They actually weren't encouraged to be involved in the creative process at all. They often had to fight amongst themselves for who would get what part. And even then, it didn't matter because the producers would just choose anyway. They were literally competing with each other in the vocal booth, I guess, to see who could sing it best, like auditioning for who could get the best lines, while producers egged them on and dangled the opportunity for having the best lines over their head. That's messed up. What about sisterhood, huh? What about sisterhood? Now we're in July of 2015. Allie Brooke Hernandez, virgin, and Camila Cabello attend the 1989 world tour together. 
this girl. Who's opening up the show, you ask? Camila's soon-to-be boyfriend, Shawn Mendes. Legend goes that Camila left Ali backstage and went to go and write a song with Shawn Mendes. And also, do you know where Ali was? She was in the pit. She wasn't in the VIP box. She didn't have a seat. She was standing there like a fan, waiting for Taylor to come on and wondering, where is my sister from Fifth Harmony? Oh, she's backstage stabbing me in the back. The song would later go on to be, I Know What You Did Last Summer. And girl, you can tell that it was written in five minutes. Yes, you can. To my knowledge, Ali was not aware that this is why she was left alone in the pit to watch Taylor slink up and down the catwalk all by herself. This is shady. I mean, Camila is between a rock and a hard place here. She needs to be friends with the girls to make her life easier in the group doing her job. But also, they have been conditioned to view each other as competition and Camila has been told over and over by the industry and the public that she, this girl, is the one who actually has a chance at fulfilling her original dream of becoming a solo artist. The circumstances of this spontaneous writing session are very suspect to me. I would imagine there was a little bit of Taylor Swift running interference here and there. There is some suspicion that Camila had already hired her own manager outside of Fifth Harmony by now, which is this man over here, Roger Gold. Do I think it's possible that a certain leggy blonde known for being an independent girl boss had advised Camila to make some business moves to secure her own girl bossery status in the future? At this time, maybe so. So Roger Gold is kind of a hero and a villain in this story. A hero to Camila for helping her become the first solo star of Fifth Harmony, but an enemy to these girls, these four other girls that comprised Fifth Harmony. He frequently caused tension between Camila, the girls, and their family members and the fans by publicly treating Camila like a solo artist before she had ever become one. He would refer to their group awards as like Camila's award. You may also notice around this time that Camila started to like dress differently than the other girls on the red carpet their outfits kill me they really do look like those build bears that just get like built completely like separately with like different fabrics and then just put together for a photo shoot this was hilarious to me and i have a feeling that roger was advising this transition from this very early stage as soon as camila was going in to do solo stuff i'm sure she had someone on her side telling her how to handle it. At the end of 2015 is kind of when the conversations about what happens after Fifth Harmony started coming up. Keep in mind, they only had one album out at this time. When asked whether she thought the group would eventually split during Fifth Harmony's November 2015 cover of Latina magazine, Camila says, honestly, I think we all do. We'd be lying if we all said it was this picture perfect thing. Like we all completely agreed on the album track list and what the sound and the music video treatment would be like. For manufactured bands, it's harder, she adds. The cool part is that we allow one another to do our own thing to do our own thing i would do that thing too to be honest i think it's healthy she says because if not personally i would go insane that is very interesting and also convenient for her to say because who was the only person actively pursuing doing their own thing outside of the group at this period of time her. I feel like personally, it's only healthy for group members to be pursuing their solo ventures when everyone is in alignment on what exactly those solo ventures are. After all, she still is at this time very much part of the group. A lot of the feuding in Fifth Harmony, I think, could have simply been solved by having a few real conversations and like dropping the egos for a second. But I think that external people, her manager, Taylor Swift maybe, kind of got in Camila's ear and prevented her from doing that. Because ultimately, you know, the first person to get out of the group was going to have the best chance of being a really successful solo artist and you wouldn't want to give your competitors a chance to take that away from you by letting them know what your plan was right so camila kind of had to keep it a secret i guess after this interview there is an inevitable fan meltdown and camila has to send out a tweet and say guys everyone relax and then their group instagram posts a picture that says we're not going anywhere with a picture of all of them in the studio at the end of 2015 i know what you did last summer comes out and it is a resounding flop like truly who cared? No one. Who moved? No one. It is definitely weird to me that Camila was allowed to do this while she was in the group. I think it would make sense if some of the other girls were doing their own ventures as well, but they weren't. I think they eventually did end up doing so after Camila like went about it first, but I got the sense that the girls pursued their own that solo ventures kind of in response to Camila doing it. They weren't like all actively being like, we should pursue these solo ventures while also working together as a group. I do have a couple of questions about how Camila managed this. One, where did she get the time to do this, given that her schedule with Fifth Harmony was like so crazy? And number two, I also wonder if Camila ended up getting a separate deal with Epic and Psycho that Roger Gold had worked on on the sly while she was trying to go solo 
cutting her an eventual solo deal with L.A. Reid. Because as soon as she went solo, she stayed on the same label. And I'm pretty sure none of the rest of the girls did, especially after the experience they had being artists on that label to begin with. So I Know What You Did Last Summer is the first solo effort. And you know what it really was? It was a declaration of war. The first person who gets to go solo has the opportunity to ride off of all the positive publicity that has been coming the way of the group after all of their hard work together. Being the first to do it gets you a level of visibility that the other members just won't get when they inevitably go solo as well. And to add insult to injury, apparently none of the girls even knew that this song with Shawn Mendes was coming out, and Camila had only actually played it for Dinah Jane. Camila says this was because Dinah was the only one who asked to hear it. My hypothesis here is that they're living in a very passive aggressive space at this time and really walking on eggshells around each other and not really talking about the actual issues at hand. And then at the same time also spending their very little non-working hours together, just allowing this tension to build and build and build. When it comes out, all of the girls congratulate Camila, except for Allie Brooke, who at three foot four inches, I suppose, was staring at knees and dodging elbows in the pit at the 1989 tour while Camila was belting her heart out with Shawn Mendes backstage. Now we're in December of 2015, the Fifth Harmony group tweets a picture of the four girls recording minus Camila. This kicks off some more speculation from the fandom that Camila was planning to leave. The crazy thing is that Camila was actually there with them in the studio that day, but the group account purposely chose a picture without her in it. Camila tweets in frustration saying, I don't like drama and I don't like egos. I do all things out of love, love for music and love for what I believe in. Camila is so corny. Does that sound like a flat out denial? It sounds to me like a little bit of shade because surely she's not referring to the public as egotistical. That doesn't make sense. I think she's referring to the other girls. She says she's afraid to look at her mentions because of all the hate she's getting. And so the complicated part about the way Camila left is that she truly burned her fifth harmonizer bridge behind her. At this point, Camilizers had developed as their own separate and devoted group of stands who were there to support her with or without the girls, preferably without it seemed. But that's still only a fraction of the total fifth harmony fan base, which was, let's be honest, not huge to begin with. What happens when you cut off the support of the vehicle that created you? It gets kind of hard to slay. This is the same month that the four girls without Camila get their own lawyer, Dina Lapolt, to fix their atrocious contract with Epic Records. This just further bolsters my theory that Roger Gold, who was a lawyer himself, had helped Camila get out of this contract before the other girls had been able to do so themselves. So in February of 2016, we are unknowingly in the sunset hours of Fifth Harmony. Lauren gives an interview and says that it would be unlikely that Fifth Harmony would be performing together in 10 years, but she hopes that they'll get to tour some more and win some Grammys. Honestly, that could have been a reality. At this point, the girls were truly better together. They were like more cohesive, they were less desperate, and they were working with better producers and writers because they had become more successful, so their label was investing more money in them. That same month, Normani gave an interview where she's asked about the future of Fifth Harmony. She says that all the girls have different visions, and in the beginning, we all had intentions of pursuing a solo career, she said. I'm still an individual, as well as the others, meaning we have slightly different visions and aspirations. We have a ton of work to do and much more to accomplish as Fifth Harmony, before that happens. So it seems that they are on the same page, right? Like Lauren and Normani are essentially saying the same thing. Our solo careers are definitely inevitable, but we're not at the apex of greatness that we could be. And we've worked really hard for the last four years to build this momentum. So let's take control and seize the opportunity with our new contracts and let's just really get to slaying. And I think this success at this point was very emotional for them as well, because the girls really had to fight hard to get a better record deal and own the rights to Fifth Harmony, the brand. Yes, they didn't even own the name Fifth Harmony for a really long time. All they needed to do with this point was just land the plane to really cement themselves as a pretty iconic girl group. So where are we at with the various interpersonal relationships in the group? The four girls are pretty solid with each other. Camila has not ever really been close with Normani from what I could tell. Plus she said some pretty terrible racist things about her to her friends, but I will get to that later on. And her friendship with Lauren was completely derailed by the delusional Cameron shippers. And she had the best relationships I would say with Allie, who was kind of the sweet logical mom of the group. That was really the vibe that Allie was always giving. She was always giving mom when she was on stage. She was like their chaperone that like really, really desperately wanted to like just be there to support them and make sure they were doing everything right. And so she would get on stage and like copy them and be silly and like pat them on the head affectionately. And Dinah was her little silly rabbit. They were really close friends together. And I think that was the last relationship to really fall apart. And I remember Dinah expressing a lot of sadness about the way that that happened after Camila had left the group. To have a healthy relationship and for you to continue on with your day and your life and to be happy, um, it would definitely have to be communication. You had to talk about it. You had to let me know what I did wrong so I can so I can make you feel better and I can at least say sorry and so we can, you know, build off from what's happened and um, just 
let that person know like I'm here for you still and I apologize. Now we're in March of 2016 and this is their moment. Work From Home comes out and it is a instant smash hit. This is their second truly bona fide big single and there was an iconic music video for this with great choreography, super high budget, and it seems like a lot of momentum behind this album promo. They are gonna do everything this year to promote the record, including arriving at the VMAs hanging off the side of a Jeep. Dinah says that one Mr. Harry Styles gave them some good advice on how to stay together as a group. He said, according to Dinah, all five of you should be on the same page and the closest things to each other because around all five of you, there are going to be people that are going to try and snatch you. People are going to try and break you guys apart. So as long as you five are best friends, that's what's most important. Oh, how ironic. <laughs> this is very ironic to say, given that it was pretty clear that the girls were never on the same page to begin with. Maybe in those early days for a very short period of time, but as soon as the first record was recorded and Camila got 50% of the vocals, it was over for being on the same page. Now we're in April of 2016 and Camila is also seen out and about with Roger Gold this month. By this point, the writing is absolutely on the wall. Shortly after this, the new lawyer to the four girls starts to get the paperwork going for their trademark transfer. And Camila is not part of this process, meaning that she doesn't really care about owning any of the work that she did with Fifth Harmony. So what makes anyone at this point in time think that Camila is invested in staying in the group if she wouldn't even participate in the filing of a trademark to own the work. This is months before Fifth Harmony said they were blindsided by Camila's intention to leave the group, but again, I'm not sure which narrative to believe, because Camila, to the public at very least, was making it very clear that she was signaling for a solo bid. So I don't know if these girls were deliberately, you know, closing their eyes and pretending they couldn't see the reality, but, you know, it was months before the actual departure of this, this girly that they kind of knew that she wasn't interested in staying anyway. To surmise, Camila was feeling froggy long before she actually jumped. Fourth Harmony, which is what I like to call them without Camila, went to a Britney Spears concert at this time, and Camila was not present. They are definitely socializing separately a lot this year, and Camila is posting pictures with other artists like Diplo, fueling rumors of more collaborations and the never-ending solo speculations, too. Now we're into May, and their second album, 727, terrible name for an album, comes out and is a moderate hit. It's mostly cruising off of the success of Work From Home, but it also has the iconic That's My Girl and All of my head flex. I like some of this record. Uh, Not That Kind of Girl also was definitely robbed of the single treatment. The line distribution on this record is definitely more even, but Camila still has the most lines by a margin of like 7%. Normani gets much fewer vocals here and Lauren gets a lot more. So I guess it swings and roundabouts. Unless you're Camila, then you just automatically get everything you want. Then we get to June and this is when we're officially in the end times, girls. The 727 tour starts and the tension between the girls is palpable. The meet and greet pictures from this time, <laughs> you end up kind of feeling bad for Camila because even if she was the one that was instigating all of this like tension and discord within the group, she still had to be around these four girls who like clearly hated her for many hours of the day in foreign places like all over the world. We have to give it up to the work ethic of Camila Cabello because she fulfilled all of her Fifth Harmony contractual obligations and was treated like an outcast by her bandmates, but still found time to be snaky and make moves behind everyone's back. I mean, it's kind of iconic. She learned from the best. It's show business, not show friendships. So the girls were really acting the fool on tour. They could not get it together and they could not get along. A psychologist came on tour and all of the group members attended these psychology sessions except for Camila. Jojo, opening act, here she is pictured, said that Camila was really the problem in the touring dynamic. Did you have already seen that, you know, now there's only four girls, obviously, was that, did you feel any of that? Um, hmm? Yeah. <laughs> um, my advice is always just to stay in a spirit of gratitude and mm. to understand how lucky we are. You just want to keep that perspective in check whenever you feel a little too excited about yourself. I would never go as far to say that Camila was totally innocent in all of this, and I certainly can believe that she had a bit of an ego around this time. She had the most clout in the group, of course she was gonna be acting different. And she was also like 18 or 19, right? That's kind of an irritating age to begin with. I think also what never really helped Fifth Harmony with their group tension was the fact that they were just constantly, chronically overworked. Camila is having panic attacks on stage and leaving halfway through shows. Lauren is breaking down and crying every other night. You can just tell that they are 
over it, especially with their interactions with each other on stage. Camila is always like way off to the side, somewhere else, apart from the girls doing her own choreo. It was like her body was subliminally telling her like, you are not part of them anymore. You are your own thing. Please make it come true. Then it's the iHeartRadio Music Awards and Camila wins four awards for her flop song, with Shawn Mendes, and two with Fifth Harmony. Her manager, Roger Gold, congratulates her without mentioning Fifth Harmony, prompting Lauren's mom to at him and remind him of who he was talking about. The girls are hanging out on tour without Camila a lot of the time having these fun photo shoots in the pool while Camila's stuck in the studio. This period of time really reminds me of that one line in her first solo song, I Have Questions, which is an underrated banger. I feel doomed in hotel rooms, staring straight up at the wall, counting wounds, and I am trying to numb them all. Do you care? Do you care? That song is about having questions for someone who was really mean to you, long suspected to be about Ms. Dinah Jane, who seemed to be Camila's silly rabbit and her last genuine connection to the group. Something happened around this time that broke their relationship down even further. We are now in August of 2016, and Normani iconically and politely great gowns, beautiful gowns is Camila in an interview. When asked what she likes the most about her or to describe Camila, she says, um, Camila, Camila, she's really quirky. Yeah, she's cute after gushing about all the other girls. And then Camila, she is, let's see, Camila, very quirky. Quirky? Yeah, very quirky. Um, cute. Quirky. Cool. Normani is then viciously cyberbullied with heinous racist abuse by Camila's fans, and it gets so bad that she permanently deletes her Twitter. Camila kind of half-heartedly makes these like vague statements about hate, but does not directly name Normani, and it was giving all lives matter. It really was. Darkness cannot drive out darkness, she said. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. She was really being annoying on Twitter at this period of time. Then she says, I won't tolerate racism towards anyone, so say her name. The black girl that you stand on stage next to every single night who is enduring racist abuse at the hands of your fans. Say her name. In response, fans brought banners to some of their stops on the tour saying, Normani, you're beautiful. We love you, et cetera, et cetera. And Camila, in the meantime, while this is happening and Normani is like having a moment and feeling emotional and grateful, Camila is making a big deal out of seeing a Cuban flag in the crowd. Girl! read the room and her mom is liking all of these messy tweets about how what normani is experiencing isn't even that bad and camila experiences xenophobic abuse all the time and then and this is probably this is the watergate of the pop industry camila gets hacked and this hack was kind of legendary there was so much corroborating evidence as well private pictures song demos etc that she literally could not deny that this leak was real and this puts her in a real bind because the majority of what gets leaked are these racist messages about normani that camila was sending to one of her friends back home when she was 15 years old on the x factor now this is not an excuse but it is important to remember that camila was 15 years old when this happened right she was an actual literal child and i don't think that we need to be holding 15 year olds accountable for their actions every single day of their lives. Camila has, at this point now, very many times apologized over and over for this, and Normani has graciously accepted her apology. So let's not bring any more discourse about that back around again. But Camila definitely didn't handle this very well until she was literally forced to. That's kind of the point. Something else that was really funny here is that a bunch of texts with Taylor were kind of leaked as well, and there is an interesting exchange between Taylor and Camila bitching about Katy Perry's hair. <laughs> and she's also asking Taylor for advice about her flop five seconds of summer boyfriend and cricket. I can't read these texts because they give me so much secondhand embarrassment. Plus, they're also really hard to find these days. Tay Voodoo, Tay Crisis Management. In August of 2016, a gossip blog reports that Fifth Harmony were seen leaving a Republic after party when Camila arrived and they were not talking. And I can confirm, because I was in the audience at the VMAs that year, watching them interact with each other in the audience while the cameras were off, that they literally were only together when the cameras were on and when they were off, Camila would go and talk to other people. She was talking to Ariana Grande for a long time while Fifth Harmony were doing their own thing. So you could tell that it wasn't good. In September, a bunch of 727 tour dates are canceled. This is also one of the times where Camila leaves halfway through one of the shows because she was feeling anxious. Lauren is breaking down during a sad song, and this only adds to the perception to the fans that the group is unraveling fast. And this is the first time that we also get like actual industry people beyond like gossip blogs and JoJo confirming that there is something going on with Fifth Harmony. Simon Cowell has asked about their differences on the red carpet, and he says that it's not a very sunny outlook. And I have to ask you, what is going on with Fifth Harmony at the moment? Same with any group. You know, we have conversations about what they want to do. You've got to listen to them. It'll be fine. Okay. 
Well, thank you so much for talking to us. October 2016, Camila releases yet another flop collaboration, Bad Things. I don't believe any of the girls congratulated her on this because the end was literally right around the corner. December 2016. D-Day. On the 18th, Fifth Harmony perform at the Jingle Bell Ball. And at this point, you can see that they hate each other. <laughs> it's palpable. Camila is dressing differently per usual to stand out. She's wearing pants while they're all wearing leotards. And she's performing way off to the side of the stage. This would end up being their last performance as a quintet. On the 19th, at exactly midnight on the day that Camila's contractual obligations to Fifth Harmony were fulfilled, Fifth Harmony announced on Twitter that Camila had decided to leave the group. And this was a declaration of war. Oh my God, it was so good to be on Twitter that day. It was delicious. It was the beaches of Normandy being stormed virtually. Fifth Harmony's statement was very strongly worded and heavily suggested at what the fans had thought about Camila throughout their last years together, that she had been actively plotting to get out of the group and had no intentions of continuing with them. This is their statement in full. Over the past several months, we have consistently made every effort to sit down and discuss the future of Fifth Harmony with Camila. We have spent the past year and a half since her initial solo endeavor trying to communicate with her and her team all of the reasons why we felt Fifth Harmony deserved at least one more album of her time, given the success of this past year that we'd worked so hard for. We called for group meetings, which she refused. We asked L.A. Reid and the label to step in and try to set meetings, which again, she refused. We even went so far as group counseling, to which she did not show up. We were truly hurt. We've been together for almost five years, been through ups and downs, and while this isn't the way any of us would have wanted this chapter in our lives to have ended, we had to begin to formulate a plan and a constructive path for Fifth Harmony to move forward beyond Camila. We truly support anyone's decision to go and do what makes them happy, and to that end, we do wish Camila the best, although we are saddened by the way she and her team handled the situation. I think, honestly, this was the best way to handle the situation, to get out in front of it before Camila could put a spin on it, and to be honest and frank about some of the behind the scenes and nonsense that goes down in the industry, that was kind of a good move. But unfortunately, what riffs like this expose to the public, it's kind of like a fourth wall breaking. It shows that these relationships are not the friendships that are being sold to you. Again, it's not America's Next Top Best Friend, it's show business. And, you know, this is nothing more than a contractual arrangement. It was kind of a bad thing for the continuing survival of the group because it shattered this illusion that they are besties who love each other and make music together and just sing and it was definitely the beginning of the end despite the fact that they said they intended to continue without Camila. I also do think the girls were completely right. If Camila had given the group one more record, then they could have gotten to a better place and theoretically really been very successful. They had basically no competition for other girl groups in the United States at that point. However, it was clear that the working conditions pitted them against each other and Psycho were definitely known for mismanaging the creative process of their artists at the time. It's pretty clear that Camila wanted more creative control and she didn't feel that Fifth Harmony was true to her authentically, but she could have just done one more album and then they all could have emerged from Fifth Harmony better prepared. What we can see from all of their solo endeavors is that none of them really seriously considered what they would want to do or what their solo careers would look like after Fifth Harmony. Even Camila, who is best positioned to succeed, really stumbled in her initial departure and I think has struggled to find her identity as an artist ever since. So anyway, Camila's official response to this statement was, when I turned 15, I had the blessing of being put into a group with four very talented girls. We were five strangers that weren't even aware of each other's existence that were given a shot at one dream together. It's been almost five years and the most important chapter of my life so far far. Uh, easy to say when you're like 20 years old. I'm so proud of everything we've achieved together as a group and will always be proud of being a part of it. I was shocked to read the statement that the Fifth Harmony account posted without my knowing. The girls were aware of my feelings through the long, much needed conversations about the future that we had during tour. Saying that they were informed through my representatives that I was leaving the group is simply not true. Just like the other girls said in their statement about their plans, I had also planned to continue with my own solo endeavor in the new year, but I did not intend to end things with Fifth Harmony this way. There is still a huge missing puzzle piece in the disconnect between them leaving. Because Camila is not saying she wasn't intending to leave Fifth Harmony, but she is saying that she wasn't intending to leave via them announcing it on Twitter. So could there have been an opportunity for them to work on some more music together? Like if they had given Camila a little bit more scope to do more of her solo stuff, if they had pushed some tour dates back? Like, was there a way they could have worked it out and they just couldn't because their interpersonal relationships had melted down to a point of no return? 
I don't know. There is definitely some creative framing here by Fifth Harmony. They do act like this completely came out of the blue, but when you examine the moves Camila had been making for the last like year and a half before her actual departure, and you recall all the conflicts they had on tour, the writing was kind of on the wall. However, did Camila communicate these contractual things deliberately to the other girls? I'm not sure. Surely the fact that she didn't want to have ownership of the trademark was kind of a sign enough, but I guess not. Fifth Harmony, however, were not going to let Camila put a spin on this. They wouldn't even let her rest around the Lord's holiday. This was like a day before Christmas. They responded with, over the past several months, we have consistently made every effort to sit down and discuss the future of Fifth Harmony with Camila. They just repeated what they said in their original letter and then said, so no, after months of rejection from her and her team, these supposed lengthy conversations in fact never happened. Although we pleaded, we have tried with exhausted efforts and hearts to keep this group alive as the five of us. And we want it to be very clear that unfortunately those efforts were not mutual. And you know, that's on period. You play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. Now we're in January of 2017. You might think it ends here, but no, no, no. We're going all the way until 2022, even 2024 now. So buckle in. Fifth Harmony debuts their first photo shoot without Camila, this image here, and it's sickening. They're serving, to be fair. But I think many of us wondered how the hell are they going to make it work without her? Ali and Dinah are, no offense to them, C-list group members, like backing vocalists at best. Lauren doesn't have the energy or the desire to carry the group as a lead, and Normani can't sing well enough and isn't confident enough in her singing ability to do it either. And I think that it's pretty clear that Fifth Harmony's management were also not ready to come up with a plan for what the girls were supposed to do without her. I think they jumped back into it way too soon. They were performing together on TV as a foursome like a month later. <laughs> And they still had a bunch of tour dates to complete. And for some time, they even had to perform with Camila's backing vocal on the track. Imagine the star of your group who you have so much resentment for, for kind of ruining this opportunity for you, has left the group and is pursuing her own incredible solo ventures while you're standing on stage clapping and smiling while her voice rings out over the PA system because your label is too cheap to help you cut new backing vocals for the tour what the hell. Camila also very interestingly started talking a lot during this time about how she felt unnecessarily sexualized in the group and I think that this is a very valid point to consider and to make. She was so young when they were really making all these creative decisions on her behalf but this sparked a lot of discourse around her solo efforts but I think it's her choice ultimately whether she wants to elaborate on how she feels about being sexualized in the group. There was a lot of talk about Camila being like well you were being sexy after you left the group and it's like well, yeah, she had control over the situation. She could decide what she was gonna wear. I think in Fifth Harmony, none of them ever really had a choice. And Camila being the youngest, I think maybe felt the effects of that the strongest. I have to say that in the immediate aftermath of the breakup and kind of still to this day, Camila has kept it cute. She has not trashed anyone or revealed anything other than her own feelings about being in the group. In her first magazine interview, she said that she felt like she couldn't express herself creatively and she wasn't expecting to receive so much support from the public. How do I remember this going down at the time? What was the reception of the public on Twitter.com? Well, the Fifth Harmony stands were pissed, but I think they knew that it had been coming all along. The public was also kind of primed for Camila so solo endeavor anyway, just because her profile had been raised by Taylor Swift as her best friend and the general star power of like working with Shawn Mendes and doing solo endeavors on her own. And also she was the general star of the show. The camera always favored Camila when they performed. So like if you were to picture Fifth Harmony and you didn't really know them, you could probably bring Camila Cabello's face in your mind. If you didn't even know her name, she's the one that would stand out to you. Camila further explained her decision to leave Fifth Harmony in a cover story for Billboard in 2017. She said, we didn't write our records. We were interpreting someone else's story. Fifth Harmony is an entity or an identity outside of all of us, and I don't think anybody felt individually represented by the sound. We didn't make it. And I feel like that is a real difference between Fifth Harmony and Little Mix. Little Mix managed to get their like group dynamic together and develop this sisterhood and use it as a bargaining chip. Because they were like aligned on their vision for the group, even when they were told they had to make certain creative concessions, they could come back to the label and be like, okay, we'll do this, but we want to do that instead, or we don't like this song, or we don't like this producer. They definitely managed to claw back more creative control because they were aligned in their vision and they weren't competing against each other. If Fifth Harmony were able to kind of get it together and really kind of bond or gel as a group, perhaps then they would have been able to shape what the identity of Fifth Harmony was. Fifth Harmony never even really got to become its own thing with any influence or say so from the girls involved. And I think that's pretty sad. Meanwhile, things for the four girls seem to be going very well from an interpersonal perspective. They seem definitely more at ease in interviews and they can even laugh at Camila's exit a little bit. In their first interview, they make sure to mention how 
awesome it is to have an open and transparent working dynamic and how important communication is, et cetera, et cetera. So in May of 2017, Camila announces her album, which ended up being a bit of a misstep, called The Hurting, The Healing, and The Loving. And she talked a little bit about the second song on the record, which was called I Have Questions. Now, this was a bop. I mean, it was a sad bop, but it was a bop. I love this, and I thought this was going to be the direction of her solo career. But I think, sadly, the Spotify playlist algorithm writing bots got to her after the success of Havana. So they completely pivoted the marketing and I would suspect took back that creative control from her that she had wrestled. But this song is very obviously about Fifth Harmony, specifically Dinah. Here's how she described it. The story behind this album starts with the second song that you'll hear called I Have Questions, which I started writing in a hotel bathroom on tour a little over a year ago. I was completely broken during that time. I was in the kind of pain that's uncomfortable to talk about, and it was the kind of chapter you never want to read out loud. I couldn't write another song for eight months because writing meant that I had to feel everything, and I wasn't ready to do that yet. I was making music about everything but what I was going through. It was like a secret burning on my tongue, and for some reason, I could not get myself to say it. Crying in the Club is also announced as her debut single, but I think it's pretty clear that Camila didn't really want to put that song out. She really wanted to put out I Have Questions. We get a double music video for both of those songs, which I actually thought was kind of cool, but neither of these songs chart very well, despite Camila's pretty extensive promo campaign for it and a Sia co-write on Crying in the Club. Sometimes drama can actually be a little bit bad for business when you're trying to promote a product at the same time. It can overshadow the thing you're trying to sell. When Camila is asked about who the song might be about in 27. Camila is, Camila is asked in interviews about who is the subject of this song, and she says it is about a friendship, declining to go any further than that. She goes on to say that she thought Down, the first single by Fifth Harmony without her, was pretty cool, but she's happy making her own music. But like I said, I wish them the best. Do you? Do you? It seems that the Cold War is becoming a hot war because more shots are fired by Fifth Harmony in their own cover story with Billboard. When asked about the group's dynamics since Camila left, Dinah says, let's just say we're in a better place now. There are no secrets in this circle. Ali then chimes in and says, you can't change people. And Normani adds, I get to sleep at night knowing we did everything in our power as friends, bandmates, and human beings. Meaning, Camila Cabello, you are a rat. You are a rat. Mila, after this, unfollows all of the girls individually on Instagram, as well as their official Instagram group page. When asked about it in an interview, she called it a cleansing of energy. In August of 2017, there is a pretty uncomfortable phone radio interview between Dan Wooden and the remaining Fifth Harmony members. He is my arch nemesis, messy boots reporter, but in like the worst kind of possible way, writing for toilet paper publication, The Sun. He interviews them and he really like zones in on getting to the root of the Camila issue. I mean, we all want to know the answer to this question, but like you got to move on when someone declines to answer your question. It's not good practice to like badger someone into telling you something they don't want to tell you unless it has to do with like a geopolitical crisis, like unless it's essential information that the public needs to know. The public doesn't need to know what happened between these five girls. Actually, maybe we do. Then he very unprofessionally goes on Twitter and like calls them divas and frauds. And Lauren claps back by saying, I'm not sure how trying to avoid answering probing questions meant to start drama between women as being a diva, but thanks for the support. Where is the publicist? Where is the publicist? When you hear them on the phone, they're just like being passed around to each other. I'm like, where is the publicist? Can we get the publicist on the phone? In August, Lauren gives an interview and says, you know, we're happy, Camila's happy, period. End of, case closed. You wish, you wish, because it's the VMAs. Okay, it's the VMAs. And it's kind of amazing that they booked the VMAs. Whoever did that, congratulations. They are there to perform two flop songs, Angel and Down, and disconnect Romani's microphone. At the beginning of the performance, they shove an effigy of Camila off the stage, and Ali says, we get asked all the time if we're getting another fifth member. Who was asking that? Who asked that? I didn't ask. And we wanted to show the world in an artistic way that, hey, the four of us are a fifth harmony and we're stronger and better than we've ever been, she explains. And honestly, it was such a monumental moment for us. We were at the VMAs. We had rain. We had the splits. We had a mic drop. Girl, you wanted her dead. Just say that. She left you in the pit at the Taylor Swift concert and you want her to die. Now we're in January of 2018. Obviously, when Camila's being interviewed, fifth harmony is like the first question on everyone's mind, so she addresses it a couple of times. She's kind of coy about being pushed out of the group, which doesn't really make sense to me because it's so clear that she wanted to leave. A lot of my fans were or are fans of the group, she says. I don't like to ruin the dream. They believed in something that's beautiful. I'm sure with One Direction too, it was the same. Nobody really saw behind the scenes. You just see the dream. With the New York Times, she commented on the VMA performance and said, it definitely hurt my feelings to be shoved off the stage. I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't prepared for it, especially because at that point I'd moved on. I was just like, why? She also talked about the competition element of Fifth Harmony. She said, I feel like being part of a group teaches you so many things about yourself, ironically, and it also brings out this healthy competition. You know what I mean? You never want to be the one that sucks. 
easy to say it's a healthy competition when you're the one who won. So in March, Fifth Harmony officially disbands. And this is interesting because I feel like the girls weren't able to be super honest about their issues while they were still under contract. Over the years, more stuff has slowly started to spill out that has confirmed many of our suspicions about what it was actually like to work inside the group. In August of that year, Camila says that she's finally in a good place with the other girls. So in December of 2019, Camila's old Tumblr is exposed and it also contains a lot more racist posts that she reblogged back in the day. This also comes up in conjunction with the resurfacing of the messages that she sent about Normani. And I feel this created a first real public accountability moment for Camila. And I think the original leak was widely metabolized by the drama and the momentum of the breakup, but this kind of stuff always comes to light. And it's exposed, of course, in a Twitter thread that receives like 20,000 likes. Camila makes an apology and says, my heart has never, even then, had any ounce of hate or divisiveness. The truth is I was embarrassingly ignorant and unaware. I use my platform to speak out about injustice and equality and I'll continue doing that. I can't say enough how deeply sorry and ashamed I am. I apologize from the bottom of my heart. February of 2020, Normani, Queen, finally has her say. She is the most compelling member of Fifth Harmony to me because of how hesitant she is to speak on anything. She's definitely got an aura of like mystique around her and it also can't have been easy being in her position and also dealing with this coming up again and again years later and seeing Camila like not ever really have to take accountability for it. So she actually, instead of talking to the interviewer in real time, took some time to think about what she wanted to say and then emailed a statement to the reporter afterwards. This is very unusual. She said, I want to be very clear about what I'm going to say on this uncomfortable subject and figured it would be best to write out my thoughts to avoid being misconstrued, as I have been in the past. I struggled with talking about this because I didn't want it to be part of my narrative, but I am a black woman who is part of an entire generation that has a similar story. She's referring to the messages that Camila sent. It was devastating that this came from a place that was supposed to be a safe haven and a sister because I knew that if the tables were turned, I would defend each of them in a heartbeat. It took days for her to acknowledge what I was dealing with online and then years to take responsibility for the offensive tweets that recently resurfaced. Whether or not it was her intention, this made me feel like I was second to the relationship that she had with her fans. I really hope that an important lesson was learned from this, she concludes. I hope there is genuine understanding about why this was absolutely unacceptable. I've spoken what is in my heart and I pray this is transparent enough that I never have to speak on it again. To my brown men and women, we are like no other. Our power lies within our culture. So now we're kind of like all back to the present day, I suppose. In 2022, Camila addressed her departure from the group in the song Psycho Freak from her third album, Familia. While opening up about her anxiety and mental health struggles over the course of her life and career, she sings, I don't blame the girls for how it went down. And then in an interview with Reuters ahead of the album's release, Camila revealed that while she isn't close with her bandmates, they're all supportive of each other. She said that through the DMs, they have been talking and that she is in a really good place with all of them. And in July of that same year, Camila posted a very touching tribute to the girls on their 10 year anniversary. As of now, the girls seem to be on pretty good terms. Camila has liked multiple posts about and from Lauren, Dinah and Normani, crickets when it comes to Ali though. Ali still, I think, hates her for ditching her ass at the 1989 tour. Dinah and Ali recently reunited for a flop summit, so who knows what's going to come of that. I am hoping secretly that with this like resurgence of Fifth Harmony interest that we're finally going to get, you know, a reunion. I want to see them all performing together as a fivesome, please. I really need to see it. But I think Normani's about to release her new album, so we need to be giving up our flowers and our cheers and our claps to Normani and support her long-awaited journey into being a solo artist. I'm super excited. My expectations are very high, but I hope she can live up to them. And that is the story of the messiest girl group in history. Let me know what you thought of this video. Do you like this style of me explaining things to you? Do you like the chronically online gay format. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, give it a thumbs up, and leave me a comment and let me know who your favorite member of Fifth Harmony was. And do you want to see more videos like this? If you do, let me know. Give me like some topics or some ideas where I could explore this format a little bit more. A Haler timeline one is in the works, but that's going to be in the works for a while because there's a lot to cover there. Thanks for watching and I will see you soon. Goodbye.